Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza, commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. All the relevant links will be down below. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Story number one. Lucifer and Hell. Written by Altful. I woke up in a dark room, not just black, but the crushing darkness where nothing was visible. The last thing I could remember was laying very sick in my hospital bed, holding my hands with my wife on the side and my son on the other. I could remember them saying that they loved me and that it was okay to let go. To let go. Ah, I see now. I'm dead. Okay, I guess I saw that coming. Not hardly unexpected. So, now what, I wondered. It was forever or maybe instantly. I wasn't sure as the time felt funny that the door opened out of nowhere near me and a dark grey light illuminating the figure in the doorway just before he stepped through, shutting the door behind him. As the door shut, I could now clearly see the figure, a dashing gentleman with a bold smile and wearing a fine suit smiled at me mischievously. Welcome, he said, to hell. With that, he laughed at the fear that instantly overcame me. I am Lucifer he continued, and it is my solemn duty to oversee your punishment. You will spend your eternity reliving every mistake that you've made, each regret you have every time that you've hurt someone. You will see the harm that you've done through others' eyes. It all makes for quite an inventory, torturous eternity. But, but, I stammered, I don't understand why. Am I in hell? I'm a good man. I've lived a good life. Always went to church. I never committed any crimes. I always begged forgiveness for any sins I'd ever committed. I lived to an old age, treated my family with only love, worked hard, provided well for them, and enjoyed a long, happy retirement. I don't think I'm supposed to be here. Lucifer scoffed and pulled out a small pocketbook and flipped it open. Well, it says here that you were a criminal and quite an evil character. Do not make the mistake of lying to the Lord of Hell, Mark Johnson. This book shows every evil. I cut him off quickly. Wait, wait, what? Who's Mark Johnson? Lucifer looked confused. Hold on, let me see your face better. He looked shocked and continued. You are not Mark Johnson. This is most unusual. There must have been a mix-up in limbo. Did you happen to see a soul named Mark Johnson while there? Light, foggy, grey place. I think you two may have been switched and he went to heaven while you came here. Oh, this isn't good. Lucifer looked really concerned. Okay, so there was a mix-up. So what does that mean? Can I go to heaven now? Lucifer sighed and opened the door into the grey darkness again and motioned for me to follow him into it. I couldn't see anything but him as the door shut behind me, except for the occasional outlines of the doorways appearing here and there. Sadly, it isn't that simple, said Lucifer. It would upset the balance between heaven and hell. I'm going to have to get a hold of heaven and see if they can locate this mark, and then we can switch the two of you into other proper places. So, you're stuck here for a while. But don't worry, it's not all that bad here in purgatory, and I'll give you something to do to keep you busy. No torture, I promise. In fact, I could use your help with something while I'm busy dealing with heaven. I nodded mutely, completely confused. Great, Lucifer said. It's quite simple, really. I just need you to do my job for a bit. Don't look so shocked, it's really easy. I actually don't really do much. I only greet souls as they come into hell, then sit through the punishment with them. Don't worry, you don't have to do any of it. They punish themselves, you see. Kind of a secret, but God and I don't actually judge souls. You judge yourselves, you see. When a person dies, their soul goes to limbo. There, they are touched with just a little bit of conscience of God, who is all of creation in a single, universal consciousness. 
There are souls review their entire lives in the eyes of God through the lives of every single living being. They see how their actions affected all of those God's creation, even down through the generations. If they can accept themselves and their life as a good man and meaningful, if they can forgive themselves any of all wrongdoings, they are accepted into heaven. If not, they fall from limbo into their own personal hell. That is where you woke up, my friend, and it is there that you'll spend eternity reliving every awful thing that you've done. Think of it like the worst case of anxiety imaginable, one that never ends. It really is a terrible thing for a soul to do to itself. That's where I come in. I explain to them what hell is and I... Well, here's another secret. I don't actually punish them at all. I only scare them to the first to kickstart the self-infliction punishment. My job is to actually try and help them. I stand beside them as they weep and cry and rage at themselves. I help them forgive themselves so that they can join God in heaven. Finding peace in becoming one with him and all creation, I try to save their souls. So that's what I need you to do. Simply walk through the door, greet the soul, telling them your name is Lucifer and that you're all there to punish them. As they speak about their evils, talk with them, get them to forgive themselves. It's quite simple. Any questions? I stood there shocked, staring at Lucifer. Wait... You're telling me that you actually save souls, and you want me to pretend to be you? He nodded. I stood in complete shock, but finally asked him, Will this get me into heaven faster? Lucifer said, Well, I can't go talk to heaven and greet souls at the same time, now can I? So someone has to do it. Can I count on you? I took a breath and nodded. He smiled and stepped back into the grey mist, disappearing. I saw a door newly formed to my side took a deep breath and walked through, emulating his entrance and greeting as best that I could, saying welcome to hell that I was Lucifer here to punish them for their sins. The woman kneeling on the floor screamed in terror and immediately started ranting about her baby that she had dropped. Now she let her sister drive drunk and later died in a car accident, and about a dog that she'd lost but told the kids she gave away because she really hated that dog anyway. She went on, and on repeating the ones that had bothered her the worst, continuing to list out her sins and regrets as she relived them again and again in her mind, her own personal hell. It was really hard to listen to, but eventually I became more comfortable and started to talk to her about some of them, telling her that it wasn't her fault or a mistake or an understandable as everyone does such things at times. With some of them, she would nod and smile before going on to list a new one, but never naming that one again. Finally, she hung her head and went silent for a long time. I simply stood by her kneading form with my hand on her shoulder, comforting. By now, she felt like an old friend, one I cared deeply for. Then, I realized she was looking at me with a smile. She stood up suddenly and hugged me, crying and thanking me over and over. Lucifer, thank you. She smiled, the biggest smile, and said, I think I'm ready to go see God now. I could only stare in awe as she turned and walked forwards, fading into a bright light. I stood there, weeping joyfully for a long time, smiling and feeling wonderful that I'd helped her get into heaven, hoping that I would see her in heaven again soon myself. Well, as soon as the real Lucifer returns... Finally, I resolved to go help another soul, reaching my hand out to the doorway to purgatory opened, and I stepped back into the inky grey place. I quickly found another door and went in, announcing myself as Lucifer to this new tormented soul. I repeated this process dozens of times, losing count. After so many souls saved, so many lives shared with me, I started to wonder where is the real Lucifer, how long he would be, and if time had any meaning here. Finally, after another soul saved, this one did something different before fading into the light. He put his hands on my shoulder and asked me warmly, And how about you, Lucifer? He said with a wink. When do you choose to join us in heaven? I could only stare blankly at him as he smiled knowingly and he also faded into the light. 
I stood there in the darkness of hell, and suddenly the realization of it all struck me. It was then that I felt the real Lucifer's hand resting comfortably on my shoulder as he spoke softly. Go on, my friend. Tell me what you just learned. There was no mix-up, was there, Lucifer? There is no Mark Johnson. Lucifer smiled big and shook his head. No, never was. I was here because my biggest regret in life, I lived this wonderful, perfect life, had all I ever wanted, but I didn't help others enough. I would walk past the needy. I wouldn't stop to check on people who might be in trouble. I seldom gave to charities, and I didn't even help comfort co-workers, other church members, or people outside my family and closest friends. I didn't help enough. I see that now, and I forgive myself for being so self-centered. Lucifer patted my shoulder. And now you are ready to go to heaven, my friend. I'm so proud of you. I'd smiled at him as the door opened behind us. Bright, warm light shone through it, and I started to step towards it, ready to enter heaven and see all my new friends. Then I stopped. I turned back to see Lucifer smiling at me, and I asked him, Do I really have to go to heaven? What do you mean? You have earned your way into heaven. You can go now, eternal peace, and be with all your loved ones, your friends, and your family. You can be one with God. Why would you not want to go? I, uh, I rather like it here. Can I keep doing this with you? Keep helping others. Lucifer smiled even bigger as the light-filled door closed behind me. I'd be honored to have your help, my friend. I looked back at the spot on the door to heaven once stood, wondering if I'd ever see it. Wondering. Hey, Lucifer, I asked. What's heaven like anyway? How the hell should I know? Sorry for the pun. I've never been there. Haven't figured it fully out yet, huh? Okay, see, I made the same choice you did, by the way. My real name is Phil. All of us, you who make the choice to take on the name Lucifer and spend an eternity helping other souls. So happy to have you on board. He waited for my name. John, it's a pleasure to meet you, Phil. With that, Phil Lucifer opened the door back into the grey of purgatory and the newly named John Lucifer stepped through it after him, the two setting off to find new dolls. End of story. Story number two. Sparta, Sparta, Sparta. Written by La Rahuya. Sparta, Sparta, Sparta. We all learn to hate those words. Those words that could change the course of a battle, of a war, of history. The first confirmed use of the order was in Xenon's system. A Federation task fleet had managed to inflict heavy casualties on the Terran strike force, with many Terran ships lying mauled throughout the system. Then, from the Terran command ship came those three dreaded words, all around the Federation fleet, and all but destroyed human ships drew upon their last reserves of power, throwing away their life support in favor of engines. Some of them simply detonated their calls, destroying all nearby ships. Others accelerated to extreme speeds and began ramming capital ships. One of the less damaged activated its jump drive and teleported into the Federation supercarrier. The surviving humans then charged out of their ship and took command of the bridge. These three words had stolen victory from our grasp and given it to the enemy. All across the galaxy, when all hope of the Terrans seemed lost, they would broadcast those three words on all channels. Half of our forces would often jump away out of fear, rightfully so. In the end, the most selfish species known in the galaxy's best weapon was their selflessness. In the final battle of the war, in a last-ditch attack, the Terrans attempted to strike the Federation's capital world in order to force the end of the war. The entirety of their remaining warships arrived in Tidus Station and, within hours, was nearly completely destroyed. Then, uh, Sparta, Sparta, Sparta. By then, we had learned to give wounded ships a wide berth. We had learned to stay on erratic courses. We had learned to avoid deaths. But planets cannot move. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. 
And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode, and I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.